Well, uh, I'm a professor at the University of the Philippines, and I chaired the government negotiating panel for talks with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. We signed the comprehensive agreement on the Bang Samoro last uh, March 2014, and we have been implementing. But uh, as you know, there has been a change in government, so uh, there's a new team that has been formed to continue with the implementation of the agreement. So I'm back at the university. At the Office of the Presidential Advisor in the Peace Process, um, we have annually celebrated not only a peace day, in fact, we, we celebrate the whole month of September as a peace month. And that's based on um, an executive order that was issued way back in 2004 by the former president uh, declaring the whole month of September as a peace month. So, uh, you know, September 21 is... Um, is uh, remembered here as the day when martial law was declared in 1972. And so it has that kind of a dual meaning. Uh, in any case, the celebration for uh, to emphasize the need for peace and peace building actually goes on for a month um, every year. Uh, there are photo exhibits that are organized and a lot of uh, activities, uh, cultural events, uh, some concerts, uh, maybe some some contests as well um, uh, involving the youth and, uh, and the different sectors in the community. So it's something that reverberates in different parts of the country and across different sectors um, because of that kind of um, a recognition of, um, of uh, celebrating peace and uh, as, even as we are still aspiring for it. In the Philippines, September 21 was also the day martial law was uh, proclaimed it, way back in 1972, and that started several decades of dictatorship. So to this day, it's sort of remembered in that kind of a very sad way. Uh, but at the same time, the fact that um, we have overcome that dictatorship and we have um, achieved great strides in trying to find good resolution to the armed conflicts that has beset our country, at least as far as the uh, Muslim population in the South is concerned, then certainly it's also a day that we think about continue, continuing to build on the peace, achieve uh, justice, and also, of course, a very important thing, national unity and reconciliation. Well, the NPS network uh, pulls together several countries in uh, South Asia and Southeast Asia to to encourage women and to recognize women for the work that they have been doing to build peace on the ground or at the subnational national levels, as well as the young people who are you know who are creating a new generation of peace builders. So. Uh, the NPS Awards have, has three categories, and um, they cut across the different age group and the different levels of engagement that women are find, are are putting their energies on. So it's a very good thing because it encourages, you know, it recognizes women, and we learn about each other's work, and that sort of helps us to be stronger as well. NPS uh, is able to bring that kind of uh, network. Uh, alive and uh, and it's something that is growing every year precisely because uh, uh, more and more women uh, get into the fold uh, although it's uh, limited to uh, about seven countries seven to eight countries in Southeast and South Asia uh, in itself it provides that kind of uh, an environment for us to get to know each other what's going on in this uh, for in these seven seven countries um, and keep track of the different um, initiatives that the others are doing. You know, it's always interesting to find out what's new in terms of actual initiatives that uh, have been experimented on by women, whether activities um, on, on the ground level or uh, at the very high level uh, of peace negotiations and uh, peace agreements. There's always something new that can be done. And, um, and peace, it, 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 Able, enables us to hear and learn more about 
all these new things that are going on in different parts of Southeast and South Asia. Well, you can't have peace without half of the population of the world on board and uh, also active actors. Um, you can't have peace without that kind of inclusivity as far as women's opinions are concerned, uh, their special needs, especially in uh, situations of conflict or at least post-conflict as well, where uh, you try to institute democratic reforms. You can't have real democracy if uh, it doesn't mean it doesn't if it doesn't involve democracy for women as well so uh, i think uh, it's 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 essential that women are involved and that they also benefit and uh, contribute to the peace process uh, a lot uh, one is of course uh, uh, the weapons, uh, they're all over the place. And um, uh, I think globally, in fact, the trend seems to be uh, greater armamentation going on. Um, here in the country, we have very loose laws on firearms. And uh, that's certainly, you know, if you have the weapons, then it's so easy to, um, to foment violence, to create violence, or for violence just to happen. But at, uh, at the at at the mind level and the heart level, there's also the problem of biases and prejudices that we still have to overcome. Perhaps a product of um, the history that has divided us as a nation in our case. And then of course there are the biases and prejudices uh, about women. I mean, sexism is still, is still very much um, present in our society today. You know, if a man is, uh, comes out as a leader and is able to fight for certain causes and um, there are ways and means that are used against her um, that are directed against her being a woman in particular. And we have seen that, I mean, I have experienced it myself um, when we over, when we face difficulties in convincing the bigger public about the merit of um, coming to terms with uh, our Moro brothers, our Muslim population in the South. And uh, it, it's not easy. But uh, I think what keeps us strong is the fact that um, we have, um, we have um, developed a strong bond among ourselves. We have our sisterhood and that helps us. It helps us to stay strong amid, strong amid all the challenges that we face every step of the way as we, uh, as we try to stop the war and um, build that kind of a sustainable, sustainable peace in our society. Well, each one of us, we are citizens, citizens of our country, citizens of the world. And as uh, if we are active citizens, then certainly we can uh, we can chart the way to the future. As peace activists, uh, we there is a strong demand for us to, you know, to not uh, not lose hope, keep the faith, stay the course amid uh, amid all the challenges to the wisdom, the merit of. Uh, peace by peaceful means. Uh, so uh, I think uh, all of this comes together and um, it's very good to have this kind of a global community because we do need the voices out there amid all the war chants that are still being waged in different parts of the world. Uh, I, I'd say that uh, the challenges are there, which means that you just need to continue striving. But little successes that come along the way, uh, th this this inspires you. This shows you that your efforts are not put in vain. Maybe sometimes you go two steps forward, one step backward, or the other way around. But there's always a forward movement. Um, but it's it doesn't mean that uh, everything will be smooth. We know that the road to peace is very rocky. Uh, it's full of obstacles, there are a lot of roadblocks, but, um, but the fact that you're not traveling alone, the fact that you have many fellow travelers with you, you have advocates with you uh, walking the same path, then that, that makes the, the challenge uh, 
um, something that uh, is achievable. So I, at the end of the day, uh, I still believe, I strongly believe that peace is possible. Uh, it's just that uh, you have to work, work at it very, very well. I mean, exert all the effort and be able to generate that kind of a new consciousness for peace to really reign in the, in the whole world. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, my co-award at the time wa uh, is, uh, was Stefan Mastura, who is now having a hard time in trying to uh, bridge the differences in uh, Syria. As you know, Syria is probably m the most conflicted area right now around uh, in the whole world. And uh, that knowing that, the, you know, having met him, having met also the women at Georgetown, uh, at Georgetown Institute, the Women Peace and Security Institute in Georgetown, and of course Hillary Clinton herself, it creates that kind of a bond and uh, a kind of uh, shared, shared, what shared um, suffering if the things are not going well, or uh, but certainly shared uh, successes as well, and it, it, it it's it's very important. Uh, because uh, you need that kind of strength to be able to continue with your work.